Hi guys, welcome to Cake and It's Special. My name is Lauren and this week I'm going to be showing you how I made a giant tarantula cake. So here we go. For this cake I made two chocolate cakes that I place on a board next to each other. I cut them into two layers and use chocolate buttercream in the centre. I've not layered these cakes because I'm going to be carving them and the height of the tops will help me. So both cakes will be carved differently so that they both look like the two separate body parts of a tarantula. So I start with the bottom section of the body which is carved almost into a petal shape. Whereas the top gets both sides carved down and the edges get rounded off. Once I'm happy with that, I can then take more of my chocolate buttercream and crumb coat both of these cakes. Now for the minute, I'm gonna be working on both of these cakes separately. When the crumb coat has chilled, I leave the top cake in the fridge while I get to work on the bottom cake. So of course this cake will get a second layer of buttercream that I smooth out with my flexible smoother to maintain that curve. And then it gets covered in a layer of very, very pale brown fondant. Once this is covered and all the excess has been removed from around the board, I can take my sculpting tool and start to add in fur lines. So I've done this with billions of tiny little hairlines. I just need to focus on the direction that they're going. So this is why I'm working on both cakes separately because if I covered both cakes in fondant and then went to do the fur lines on one cake, by the time I come back to the other cake to do the fur lines on that one, it would have already started to dry, so when I was trying to push my sculpting tool in, it would just crack. When I'm happy with that, I can then do the same thing with the second cake. Keep hold of all your fondant scraps because you're going to be needing it. This tarantula has an extra section at the front which will make out a fondant and attach with a bit of water. And then once again, put all your fur lines in. I use my balling tool to push in eight eye sockets. Eight eyes! Nothing will get past them. They would never miss a piece of cake. I then put this cake to the side for a bit while I work on the legs. So for this, I take several strands of flower wire and twist them together to make them one. I then wrap the whole thing in florist tape. I of course make eight of these. 
Now I can take my fondant leftovers that I've now added Tylose powder to and I roll out cords and insert the flower wire inside. The reason I've added Tylose powder to my remaining fondant is because the legs are going to need to set up nice and firm and in the position that I want them in. Now I can decide what position I want the legs in and of course they all need fur lines as well. I attach them to the cake with some royal icing as glue. I use more of my fondant at the base of each leg, attaching it to the board, blending the fur lines in as well, of course. Once I'm happy with all that, I can give the whole thing a layer of orange food colouring, which I diluted with clear food grade alcohol. I've diluted it down quite a lot so that all the paint will fall into them fur lines that I've pushed in with my sculpting tool. Once I'm happy that this has had enough time to dry, and given that I used alcohol that will evaporate, it doesn't take very long at all, I take my remaining orange paint and make it a dark brown. And then paint the tarantula again. This time I am leaving some areas of orange showing of course I have a picture nearby that I keep referring to. I'm looking at loads of pictures of Mexican red knee tarantulas, which is what I've gone for, so that I can decide which areas I want to leave orange and which areas need to be brown. I then just add eight balls of black fondant into the eye sockets. The final thing I want to do is cover my board in the last of my buttercream and break up my cake scraps and lay them on top so it looks like dirt. And there he is. He's quite cute, really. So that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this cake. If you have any ideas of cakes that you would like to see me make on this channel, let me know in the comments below. Or you can also find Cake and It Special on Facebook and Instagram. I absolutely love hearing from you. So I will see you next Wednesday at 5 p.m. GMT with something completely different. And until then, please subscribe and share. Thanks guys, bye.